everyone and welcome back we will continue where we left off in this terrain slash fields project and let's get started by in the network let's drop in a null and call it out terrain let's connect it to the to our terrain here and now we can go to the so, so we go to the Solaris and change this to stage and we have an empty stage so let's import our terrain let's go out terrain accept and load as reference if you see this warning you just need to, to save the file and it will go away so let's drop a light so don't light and I have a texture somewhere. Uh, yeah, this one. Let's enable these nodes. And we, we can use Karma or Redshift, but I'm going to use Arnold as I'm more familiar with it. So the first thing we see is the, the format of the of the light is not correct we need to change it to a light long and let's also go to the Arnold settings set or create in the samples and set it to 2 let's create a more dramatic light lighting by rotating a bit the light not so much something like this yeah, this should do. Let's disable the grid. Okay, now let's create a material library to assign some materials to our terrain. And let's create a material builder, Arnold material material builder. Let's call it terrain mat. Let's dive inside and create a standard surface. Let's give it some color and connect the shader to the surface now we in the material library you can click on auto fill materials and let's assign it to the height which is the name of our geometry so yeah it is working we can desaturate a little bit yeah but we will use another technique so let's create a vector how is it called state vector let's set it to shading normal and with that we can connect a dot product connect the vector to the input one set just we just want the y and let's connect it to the base color so nothing much to see so let's create a ramp And in here we can connect to the first input, to the input, I mean, and we can drag this. And as you can see, we start to create a mask to mix some textures later. <coughs> so let's load some textures. Let me see if I have it here. It's not this one. Yeah, it's here. It's the albedo. This is the grass texture. Let's connect it to a color correct first. And then to a triplanar. Triplanar. Let's go to input and connect it to the second color of the ramp so let's increase the exposure and fix the tiling we will use a triplanar because it has some attributes to control the repetition so paste relative reference and let's go to 0.01 Point oh eight point oh one five 
so something like this now we can load another texture let me see if I find it here it's not this one yeah I believe it's this one so we can revert the, the values to factory defaults and let's connect this tri planner to the color one let's see how it is the repetition control 2 something like this Let's also create the roughness. We don't need these two, just connect it from here. And let's load the roughness. Roughness. So I'll click roughness. And this one is correct too. Let's just change it to raw. Utility, utility raw, and let's connect one of the channels to the specular roughness. Now we can adjust a bit the colors. Do your shift, maybe remove a bit of saturation. a bit too reddish so let's increase a bit the hue maybe not so much yeah something like this still this grass texture is a bit let's increase the gamma we can adjust it later let's leave it like this for now now we will, would also benefit from some displacements so let's reuse this setup and load in the displacements let's just get rid of the color correction nodes and load in the displacements not the JPEG but the XR I'm still loading the same one, displacement. So, yeah. Now we can connect it to the displacement output. So, as you can see, we have the material assigned, no sign of displacement. So, let's create a render geometry settings. And we don't need subdivision, but displacement. So let's enable auto bump, set the padding to 3, something like this. Zero value to 0 0.5, and let's get the height to 10. But still we see no displacement. I believe this is a bug, because uh, everything is assigned and it should work, but it's not loading in the, the displacement. So let's instead of assigning here, the workaround is to assign material, use an assign material. And now we can change the primitives to height and the material path should be the rain mat. Let's see if the displacement is working now. And yeah, now it's working. Maybe it's a bit too much. Let's just do something here in the material. 
we want to play with uh, blend and sell attributes to rotate a bit the textures. So let's copy this parameter and paste it. Let's paste relative reference and we need to paste in all of them. I should have done this in the beginning. Let's also copy this one. Paste it here. Paste it here. Here. So let's see. Now we no longer see those lines. Let's try to add a subdivision. Maybe reduce the height to weight. Let's go to the material. Change the ramp a little bit. Let's leave it like this for now. Okay, let's check again the the render. This green is a bit too intense. So let's come here and this is the one. Let's change the U is okay, but perhaps the saturation. Yeah, something like this will work better. We can increase a bit. This one still this one is a bit too yellow. Let's keep it like this for now. Maybe increase a bit the height. We will see it from here. Yeah, let's leave it like this. <coughs> so let's go back to the object context and let's create a geometry. And let's call it this assets. Let's create an alembic, alembic, and let's load. I believe is this one. Yeah, we can hide all the other objects. Let's just transform it, scale it down a little bit because it's too big. Something like this, and we can call it. Let's get back to the stage and this time we will use a component geometry. And 
diving inside we can object merge the tree in the assets tree let's connect it to the default and as for the proxy we can just create a match size and a box let's resize it and here we can scale to fit and on the uniform scale so yeah it is working okay now we have the tree we can create an instancer let's set it to the first input and zero and here let's load our terrain let's create an all here and call it terrain and let's go to a lot import let's go to terrain and we will scatter but as you can see it's not showing any points let's just reduce the points <coughs> And <clears throat> what we need to do is to unpack the USD for this to work. At least it should work. Let's check. It's not working. So lap import. Oh, we need to import the terrain. Stage terrain and primitives. We need to set it to a height. And now. least we should have the points okay. oh we need to set it to polygons yeah now we do have the points so we can change here to final render or preview it's much faster so in the let's merge these inputs with the trees so we have the, these trees all over the place i want to to have them here on the sides of the road and we do have um, a mask for that let's go to the density and go to sides mask and yeah now it's working as we want So now you can see all the trees are facing the same direction, have the same orientation. And I want to change that, give it some random rotation. So let's go to the instancer. Let's let's spin this view. Go to the instancer and create an attribute triangle. So let's start by creating a random vector. is equal to a vector vector if I can type let's give it a random function to the points and create a control for it all seed and let's close one two So, let's create another vector, this time for the min and max rotations, we will fit them in the range of 0 to 1, let's create the controls, rotation min, it's not foot but fit, and rotation max, should be like this let's create a matrix tree so we can manipulate the vectors right and and now let's rotate the, those values 
by radians, radians. And first time the rotation X. And we want to set it on the first axis. So X. This should do. And do the same for the Y and the Z. Just changing here. So let's orient them. This is where the rotations happen. Quaternion. And this should do the trick. Let's test it. Let's hit this button to create the controls. And let's go minus 360 to 360. And yeah, it's working. We can also rotate it on the X and on the Z. Minus 80 to 80. And we get this, those random rotations. So, <coughs> we might need a weight uh, a way to orient the instances along the normal of the surface. So let's create a control for that. Let's go create an integer called switch and create the control called surface orient. It's not CHV. CHI. And so if the if the switch is equals to one we want to orient plus equals so we don't conflict with the other orient. We'll use this function and set it to the y-axis and the normal let's see if this is correct and yeah as you can see now it's oriented along the normal of the surface and we can switch between those. This might be useful for other assets we will scatter. While we're here, let's create some controls for, for the, the scale. So, Let's create a min scale. Min scale equals G CHF for float. Let's call it min scale. Let's call it this one max scale. And now we want to create a random scale. Eight zero one. The random function in the points. Plus a seed. And let's fit it to the mean mean scale. And max scale. And the only thing left to do is to affect the p scale. So random scale. And yeah, this will create by default. Uh, by default, it will be in the zero, but we can change that. Let's put something like 1.2 and 0.9 and we can seed, change the seed.
so now that we have these controls we might want to have access to them in the stage so let's create an all and edit parameter interface and let's create a folder for the random ro random rotation yeah no what and from here let's go to the instancer and attribute wrangle and let's drag all these attributes and we get a warning because we have this option enabled so let's disable and let's drag it seed let's call it rotation min and rotation max let's add a spacer between the the inputs and we have something like this and for the surface orient we can change it to a toggle yeah as it's easier okay let's do the same for the random scale from nodes mean scale max scale let's let's put the seed above and call it just seed and give it some space change it to simple here and also here okay you can see it's working and the scale we want probably to increase the range to three so if we want to control a bit more <coughs> okay we might want to have access to some scattering attributes so let's create a new folder change it to simple and set it to scatter options and from the nodes let's go to the instancer scatter options and the number of points let's call it number of points and let's also use the global seed and we can just add a spacer okay for the number of points you might want to reduce it to 10,000 the range yeah something like this maybe even 1,000 something like this and we can change the global seed Let's just rename this to Instancer Randomizer and we can connect it here. So now let's work on some grass. Let's go back to the object level and let's load a file. Let's see can be this one, var1 let's unpin it and let's delete those colors vertex attributes color and let's also transform it to point 0.1 something like this and let's create a proxy size so we want to resize the box to the same size of the grass so if we see this one and template this you can see it's working okay let's create the outputs grass 
outgress outgress proxy and now let's create a subnetwork from this and let's call it var1 let's go here and change this to var2 yep and for the var3 i'm going to load another one instead of three but it won't matter because it will be just called var3 <coughs> so we have these three different variations of grass for this one let's change it to point three let's see yeah it's about the same size maybe point to eight, something like this. So, yeah. Okay, let's get back to the stage. And create the component geometry to load the assets. Let's go to an object merge and load in the var1, var1 out grass. Connect it to the default and now let's load here the proxy and we can see it's working let's just change the render and proxy yeah okay now we want to create the variations so let's put down uh, component geometry vari variants and instead of inputs we want to change it to number and we know we have three so now this node has a built-in variable called let me see if I remember it's called at geo variant index I, I believe this is the name so we can copy this and let's procedurally load the variations between backticks geo var variant index plus one because it starts from zero and our variants start from one so this should work it will give you a warning but it should load fine yeah let's change it to final render and let's explore the variants to see if everything is loading And it's only loading geo. Let's maybe it's geo var index. Let's change it again to variant. And it's only loading the first one for some reason. Var geo variant index. Oh, we need to to set it also here. Not only there. Now we have all the three variants, as you can see, and let's instance them in the next one. Okay, now we want to instance this grass on our terrain, so let's copy this and connect it here, and as you can see it's it's not in the origin, so we need to set it to zero. But it's loading all the three variants in the same spots, so on, on all the points. So what we need to do here is to set it to explore variant asset. Let's 
that still is loading every single uh, it's loading the parent so we need to load the children like this and now it should work properly as you can see it's loading all the variants so for the grass let's just merge it here let's just see if this is working yeah now we're scattering on the same on the same mask what we want to do is to scatter instead on the front fields let's just it's a bit slow let's just change it to proxy and let's get back to object level to the geometry and right here where we have the fields divided we want to create an we want to create a null and call it out fields let's go back to the stage and on the instancer we can delete those two nodes disable the mask and let's load object merge let's load the geometry out fields and let's see if this is working and what we need to do is go back to the object level and we need to co copy as we won't use this scatter but we need these attributes the unpack the attribute combine for the masks and the invert mask so let's copy these three nodes and on the instancer let's paste it here and this should work now we're scattering grass on the fields but we want to control to the specific groups we created so let's get back to it and uh, 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 in the scatter node let's change let's make sure we unpack the name we transfer the name and in the scatter we want to select let's say group zero let's increase the number of points and yeah we're scattering where we want Okay, as you see we have assets and everything is called assets so what we can do is for example here create a component output and let's call it uh, grass grass01 still working yeah and here we can call it grass01 and is working so let's create the material for the grass so after the instancer let's let's create a material library and in here let's create a, a standard surface let's call it grass net and let's load an image let me see if I can, it's not this one, it's not this one, yeah, so let's load the albedo and we can also 
place the color correct. Make sure you're using the Arnold node base color and let's enable the shader. And now we can load the roughness and connect it to the specular roughness. Make sure you set it to utility raw. Let's load also the normal and create a bump to the bump map vector uh, normal and let's also load the translucency so we have we don't have translucency oh it's not this texture let me check not this one so let's go to models and grass textures atlas yeah this is one let's go here is roughness and here is normal and right here, let's just paste it and go to translucency. Yeah, now we can connect it <coughs> to the subsurface color. Make sure we enable the in wallet and in a subsurface, let's set it, I don't know, to 0.4, something like that. And let's just assign it, assign and assign to geometry. And let's assign it to this. It should work. We barely can see any instance, so let's increase the amount thirty thousand. And yeah, the material is working. Let's just go to the material, increase the exposure. Play a bit with the U shift. <coughs> now we can see much because the render settings are very low so let's go back to the stage and after the right here let's create a render settings and set it to manual <coughs> and go to the Arnold tab and change the change the camera samples let's say to four just to, to check So as you can see it's a bit too uniform, so let's go to the material and let's set a jitter node connect the albedo to the input let's go per object we can change this per object and let's connect it to the base color and change a bit the U. So you can see we can affect the colors. Let's also give it some min and max gain, not much. So now we have a bit more variation. What we can do is to Increase the amount of instances, let's say 60,000.
so we will probably change a bit the colors, but let's leave it like this for now. So what we can do next is to copy this part and here we still have the same Grasso 2 Explore Variants and let's change it to Grasso 2 and it's Explore Variants 2 yep change it to 10,000 and press O2 and now let's connect it here and let's go in the instancer and change the group Let's go to group 1 for instance. Yeah. Now let's see. It's working properly. Explore variants 1. Oh, explore variants 2. Let's see if we need to to rename the materials. And we need to go for the down light. And let's change thousand. Yeah. So instance are three prototypes. Yeah, now it's working. Change it to thirty thousand. Let's see the materials. Yeah, it's changing everything, so we just need to rename this grass mat too. And come here, and this should do the trick. We can just remove this. Yeah, now it's working. So Let's not expose so much. Maybe something like this for now. Let's change the U shift to something like this. Maybe we can change this one too a bit. Okay. And now let's create the last one. So grass O3. Explore variants tree, explore variants tree, grass so tree, and the material library. We need to change it to tree, grass mat tree, tree, and tree, and four. Now we just need to go here and change it to group two. Now we have everything. Let's change it to 30,000. How many we have here? Let's go for 6, 5. And let's do a render. Let's change the material a bit. change again I'm not liking these brownish tones
So let's leave it like this for now and we can get back to it. Let's continue now. So we'll once again create, let's go back to the object level, assets and let's create, uh, let's load in an Alembic. one it is I believe it's this one nope 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 yeah so let's load the first one so let's just transform it again set it to point one and create a uh, now and let's create a match size just to create the proxies box and right here and here we can call it proxy okay now we can create a subnetwork from it one. Let's come in here and change it to two. And in this one, we can change it to three. Yeah. So one, two, three. Let's go back to the stage. And Let's create a switch node to disable temporarily the grasses. Let's copy this component geometry, this network, and instead of loading the grass, let's load, let's copy this part. And let's load the bush. And instead of this, we're going to use the variable. Oh, oh it's not this one. It's actually, out bush. Out bush. Let's copy this for the proxy. And right here. Mm -hmm. This should work. Let's see. Pushes. We have three variants. Let's check final render. It's not loading the correct ones. So let's get back to this and see. If it doesn't push one, how to push proxy. This is a bit buggy. Let me check. Oh yeah, it's working. It's just that we have here an output that is showing up after the explore variants, but that's no problem. If we go to the instancer and we change it to four and bushes, let's change it to preview. As you can see, it's loading all the three individual elements. <coughs> uh, 
Okay, let's just not scatter on the same uh, patterns. We want to scatter around the fields. So for that, let's go to to the object context, geometry, and I believe is this one. Yeah, we want to scatter on this. So let's create an all here. And let's go for out fields, outlines. Let's get back to the stage. And let's disable this for now. And right here, we want instead the outfield outlines. We don't want to unpack neither of these. And in the scatter, we want to use this. So, outfields. Yeah. And right here. Yeah, it's working. The points were just too small to see. So, let's increase the number of points. For some reason, he's not loading the correct proxy. Oh, I know why. It's loading the correct proxy, but I need to scale to fit and disable uniform scale. should work. Yeah. Let's just change the amount to something like this. We don't want many. Maybe a bit more. Let's also connect the switch node. Something like this. So I created all these materials outside recording just not to bore you with connecting textures. It just has the basic textures and some color correct correction and a color jitter. So let's now show you how to connect the materials. Let's auto fill and we have four. So what we can do here is go to the instances, bushes, and we can see the name of the different parts, so we can just for the leaf do this, leaf, leaf for one, let's do petiole, let's do star trunk of one and star trunk of two and this should do the trick let's see and yeah it's working Sometimes the render region gets a bit buggy, so let's reset by opening a new pane. And you can see the materials are now working. <clears throat> let's enable everything. And outside recording, I'm going to fill the materials for the trees and be right back. 
So I have here another tree that I want to scatter around. It's called tree 2. Let's go to the stage. Let's copy one of these grasses. And instead of this, let's let's set it to three three oh two. We don't want any variants. Let's delete the proxy and let's merge the three oh two. Let's do again a simple proxy. Box. and scale it to feet uniform now we should have the tree <coughs> we don't need the explore variants and we can just set it to default and let's go to zero that is the first input Now it's gathering too many trees. Let's hope is let's hope it will not crash, but it probably will. So it did crash. So we're back to the same part. We have the tree here in the component output. Let's revert this to the defaults and change it to the first input. Let's make sure we are on preview. Let me just copy the materials. So I have the materials for the tree. Let's clear it and assign it. So instance R6. It's got tree to render. And we can put leaves. Our trunk. This should do. And in the instancer, we don't want to scatter. Yeah, we want to scatter in the fields. So now we want to scatter not only on the group zero, but also in the one. So let's connect it to the main merge. And I don't know, let's also scatter on the group too. So we can just leave it like this. And let's randomize something like this. Maybe a few more. leave it like this so we have the materials yeah so <clears throat> let's see how it renders so the materials are not working properly yeah I assigned this should be here Disable the light. I want to enable everything. And let's see how it goes to render. So I played a bit with the settings, changed the, the seed of the scattering, changed a bit the materials, and came up with this quick render. Nothing special, but we we had the opportunity to look at Solaris and how it works, how it is the workflow. So I hope you have learned something new and if you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know. Thank you and see you next time.